So how do you pray to Hajjud? How is it different than any other prayer? Well, first of all, let's talk about timing. We know that Qiyam al-Layl and Tahajjud are kind of interchangeable words. Usually, if you pray it after Aisha, so right now we're talking about the time between Salat al-Aisha and Salat al-Fajr. This is the nighttime between the nighttime prayer and the morning prayer. Now, if you pray before you sleep, we usually call this Qiyam al-Layl. And if you sleep and then wake up, we usually call this Tahajjud. How do you pray it? You've prayed Salat al-Aisha, you've prayed your Sunnah of Aisha, and now what? If you're going to pray Qiyam al-Layl, you can stand up and make intention for two extra rak'ah, and you just pray two rak'ahs, and then you can sleep. Or you can sleep after Aisha, or do, do the dishes or whatever you do, and then you go to bed, wake up before Fajr. Now, simplest, you can wake up even 15 minutes before Fajr. And just make wudu and pray two rak'ahs of tahajjud. And then you wait for the fajr prayer and you pray. That's the simplest. That's the basic. Two rak'ahs of tahajjud. Now, here we have also salat al-witr. Okay, so witr is our a very strong sunnah. And it's meant to be prayed at night. So the next step we can say is we're going to wake up just a tiny bit earlier. Pray two rak'ahs of sunnah al tahajjud. And then pray Witr, depending on if you're praying at which madhab you're praying, you're going to pray all three rakahs together, or two and then one. Now, what else can we do at night? Of course, first of all, there is what has the Prophet ﷺ told us about the numbers of rakahs to pray at night? We have interest, many different uh, narrations that talk about the number of rakahs. Abdullah ibn Umar anhu, tells us that the Prophet ﷺ would pray 11 rakahs, so that's 8 plus 3 which is the eight rak'ahs of tahajjud plus three of witr, eight being two, 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 two. Now, mind you, the prayer of the Prophet ﷺ was not the prayer of your regular Ahmad or Tala. It was a prayer that was long and extended. So I, we don't need to hold ourselves to eight rak'ahs. What we need to think about is the time at night that we want to pray. And I really want to emphasize thinking about habit growing. So think about, I'm going to do two rakahs. I'm going to start with two. Then I'm going to do four. And then I'm going to do six. And then I'm going to do eight. Now, maybe I'm doing eight. Maybe now I want to expand each of these rakahs and make each one longer. Maybe I'll just do four, but I'll make them longer. Or maybe I'll do something else. Here are a few ideas of things to do at night. Our community, one of the things that our community is struggling with is missed prayers. Many, many, many Muslims today, unfortunately, have a lot of fuddled prayers that we have missed. One really beautiful way to use the night is to make up your fuddled prayers. So to say, well, you know what, when I was 14, I should have been praying, but I wasn't. When I was 15, I should have been praying what I, when I wasn't. I'm just going to do what I can to make up these prayers. Now, for some people, they get really serious about it. They print out a paper and they start marking off the prayers so that they can reach a point where all these prayers are made up. And they do it at night. That's a time when things are quiet. You're, if you're praying anyway, it's just easier, really, to pray a full day of qada rather than rak'atain, two rak'ats, two rak'ats, two rak'ats. But either way, whatever you want to do, it is beneficial to pray at night. Now, what should these rak'ats look like? When you are reciting Qur'an at night, you recite the Qur'an out loud. You benefit from listening to it yourself. Your recitation uh, improves. And maybe you'll be like Usaid, anhu, where the angels are coming down and listening to your recitation. Now, of course, I know that not everyone's Quran memorization is good enough to be able to do this at night. So in the Shafi'i Madhab, you can set the Mus'haf in front of you. On You can get a music stand, a cheap music stand from anywhere, really. Uh, go to your local shop, better than those big online stores, and buy one, put it in front of you. Then you can get a mushaf that is bound with a spiral bound, a spiral bound mushaf that will lay flat, or anyone that you that's big enough, even an, even a tablet on a stand like that. And then it's right in front of you. So you can pray a longer prayer. You can pray a whole page or two pages in that rakah where you're slowly 
meditating and thinking about these verses, listening to the verses as they enter into your heart and spending time. And remember what Hudayfa radiallahu anhu told us about the prayer of the Prophet sallam, that the standing was equal in time to the ruku' was equal in time to the sujood, to the movements of the prayer. Think about that, especially at tahajjud. I know that when we're busy in the day, sometimes our dhuhr prayer might be really quick. Oh, got to run off to that meeting. Or maybe asr, you have to go and cook dinner. Or maybe at maghrib, you have bedtime things going on with the children or a Zoom meeting or something that's nagging at you. But at night, even WhatsApp stops working. Well, for the most part. Here is a time to have a balanced prayer, to recite, to settle in your ruku'a, settle in your sujood. And one other really important part of tahajjud is du'a. So we talked now about rak'atain, rak'atain, two rak'ahs, two rak'ahs, two rak'ahs, or, or you can do qada' yawm, a day of qada', or you can do any sort of special prayer. So I'm just going to list some special prayers that you might be able to think about. And I... It, this is something fun. Make tahajjud interesting for yourself. If you're a person who's not in love with routine, do something different every night. One night you can do qada' yawm. One night you can do eight rak'ahs. One night do two rak'ahs reciting Surah Al-Baqarah, for example. One night maybe you can do Salat Al-Tasabih. Maybe one night you can do Salat al hajj If you don't know what these are, you can look them up. You can Google them, alhamdulillah. Or look them up in your fuqh book. The prayer at night is a time to really develop that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So having new things to do is a good idea, but also take, take note of the environment. Set up your prayer place. The other day in my own house, I was doing some spring cleaning. It actually was summer cleaning, but some summer cleaning and I was moving things around and my daughter wasn't home. She came home and she kind of looked at me with a panicked look. Mama, where's your prayer place? Because it wasn't, I didn't have one out at, the, at that moment. I said, don't worry, don't worry, I'm moving things over here. But get our children used to seeing that there's a place in the house where we settle in our prayer. And also for yourself, is something about knowing where you're going to go. Light a candle, spray some perfume in the area, or incense, whatever it is that you like to bring beautiful smells. Bake some cookies in, in the middle of the night. Bake, uh, bring some cinnamon rolls and open it up so that smell is filling the air. And make it a place of cleanliness. Make sure your prayer clothes are clean. Make sure the prayer carpet is something easy to sit on. If you are not able to do sujood, you have knee issues or a broken leg or something, then have a chair that's comfortable. Pay attention to these things. Get the place ready so that when you wake up, your appointment, your meeting with your Lord is prepared. You're just beautifying yourself with wudu, and you're going to that prayer carpet. You begin with rak'atain, two light rak'ahs, and you have the, you do these two rak'ahs, and you they're very lightweight. That means they're not very long. That's how the Prophet ﷺ would do it. And then the next ones are longer. You, you've warmed up, just like exercise, exercise of the heart, exercise of the spirit. You've warmed up, and then you extend that, and then you sit and make dua. And if you're a person who can't think about what to make du'a for, make notes during the day and set that next to you so that you can look at it and remember to make du'a for me. Remember to make du'a for our ummah. Remember to make du'a for your children, your family, for all of the people that you know and don't know. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide, support, help, cure, send His mercy down, forgive all of those that we love and those that are close to us and those who are far and make tahajjud and pray for ourselves that we make tahajjud a habit for us, that that prayer becomes the thing we long for and hope for and enjoy deeply. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barik ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyyina Muhammad wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.